Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to draw a giraffe in pastels and for this tutorial I had a very specific aim in mind. I wanted to answer two questions that I'm asked more frequently and that is how do you draw fine details with pastel pencils without them looking grainy or too harsh or thick and how do you select the colour in that reference photo. Now with pastels we can layer specific colours to achieve one colour that we can see in the photo and if you've seen many of my other tutorials here on YouTube you'll know that I focus on contrast so your lights and your darks more than the specific colour but I do appreciate because I was there as well throughout my art journey where we'd put a lot of stress on ourselves to try and get the exact colour right and sometimes thinking well there is no set pencil that does that job. Well this is what this tutorial on Patreon focuses on. So what I decided to do is I worked on the left side of the face first and as you can see I'm doing everything in grayscale. I still use my pastel pencils for this, all of this is done with pastel pencils, there are no pan pastels, I wanted to make this as simple as I could. And here I'm focusing on my values and the importance of contrast. My reason for working on grayscale on this side is to show that you don't have to work with colour at all in order to create a photorealistic portrait. This is why graphite portraits can have just as much hyperrealism as any other colour based medium, because it's about focusing on your values. If you get your shadows dark enough and your highlights bright enough, the amount of depth that you can build up here it is still going to look like that photo, just a black and white version. So this was my main aim. Now one thing that you can see here, and I'm going to have a clip in a moment in real time, is how I'm showing you the exact pressure that should be applied to that pencil at each layer. And I find the easiest way to show this to my Patreon members because all of this is in real time and I have a voiceover while I'm working so I can explain it as I'm doing it, and that's through using a putty eraser. You can see in the corner here I am demonstrating how much pressure to apply and how much pressure not to apply. Too much pressure, you're going to potentially feel the tooth of the paper, you're going to not get the results that you want, the pencil strokes are going to be very, very different. So depending on how much pressure is applied, it's going to vary those pencil strokes considerably. Now the use of a putty eraser is a really good way that I can tell my Patreon members and I can show my Patreon members through something they can also use themselves at home, just means that they can always get used to using that putty eraser with the amount of indentations that I'm using on that eraser to show the amount of pressure that I personally am applying, it just means then that that can be transferred into their own work. So if getting fine details with pastel pencils is something that you do find quite challenging because it is all in the pressure and how we use that pencil, then this tutorial on Patreon may be of interest. Now if it is and any of my other slower in-depth tutorials are of interest, I will make sure to link my Patreon in the description below. And with this tutorial you get the reference photo, the line art, full material list, all of the pencils that I'm using from start to finish and also a colour swatch of the original reference photo. So this here is allowing me to pinpoint the exact colours that I'm going to be trying to mix when we get to the colour aspect of this tutorial. So as you can see through this one side here, I've been working all with my grayscale pencils, but I'm focusing on those contrasts. It is so important. I've got a really nice variation between my lights and my darks, and it's that that's building up the three-dimensional shape of the face. I still have to pay very close attention to my fur direction, my fur length, and th fur thickness. This is one of the main things that's going to affect the overall feel, the shape, the proportions, the perspective of your original portrait. So the way that the fur travels in directions is not random, it is there for a reason and it's following the underlying bone and muscular structure. So if we don't get that right, it's going to change what that animal looks like in our finished portrait. Okay, so this is the part of the tutorial where I really started to explain the way that I personally choose colour and how I mix colours based on the colour wheel. Now that sounds complex, as soon as you mention colour wheel we start to think oh that's going to sound really confusing but the way that I do it, it really isn't, it's very simple and when you get used to using that mindset of whether or not it is a warm or a cool colour which is all of what this tutorial focuses on for this section it's something that you don't need a colour wheel in front of you. You can just visualise that colour wheel in your mind and it helps you to really narrow down the pencils that you should be using. 
Now what I was doing originally at the beginning where you just saw that colour wheel is showing that you can start off with any brown and you can then make that a different shade of brown by layering another colour on top. So there are many cases where you think, Do you know, I don't have that colour in my set, but you can mix that with your other existing pastel pencils. Now I know in terms of the colour wheel, depending on what you see or read online, and based on that colour it says you should do this or you shouldn't do that, but for me personally I don't go into any of that aspect. There are no set rules in art, but this colour wheel and the way that I personally select colour, it really couldn't be simpler. So because this version on Patreon is all in real time, you are going to keep seeing that colour wheel come into view because I am explaining why I'm using a specific colour. But one thing that's really noticeable throughout the colour aspect of this portrait is how important our values are. And this is going back to the part one of this tutorial where we've worked in grayscale. I'm still making sure that I'm getting my browns, my tans, my beiges, the right shade of that colour. So whether or not it needs to be a dark brown or a light brown, that's what's going to make this side of the face as three dimensional and realistic as the grayscale side. It's just about trying to have a way of managing to select those colours in our mind to make that side of the painting and drawing process easier. Because this colour wheel method can be applied to any colour based medium, not just pastels. And once I've identified with that colour wheel whether or not I need a warm or a cool colour, what I then do is I think, right, okay, with those pencils in front of me, I now need a darker shade or a lighter shade. Those two processes are going to make the selection of all of those hundreds of pencils we might have in front of us much easier. As you get more confident with the way of selecting your colour through using this method, you already then start to have an idea in your mind when you look at that photo of, right, I think that's the colour that I'm going to have to use. And now that I'm starting to work on a larger section of the fur, I'm gradually merging that and fading it into the grayscale side. I deliberately didn't want there to be a really harsh line down the middle, I did want it to look like it was gradually transitioning from the black and white to the colour. Now as I start working on the rest of the fur detail, you're going to see how I'm building up my layers. Now again, this is something that I cover in all of my tutorials, both here on YouTube and Patreon. If you feel that the fur that you're drawing is flat and two dimensional, the cause is likely to be that your contrast isn't right, going back to your lights and your darks, and that you don't have enough layers built up. Those are the two main common causes of that. And here you can see that I'm building up many, many layers before I even start thinking about any kind of fine detail. Because I wanted to focus on the contrast and also the colour, but I still wanted to show how to build up those details, going back to the pressure and the putty eraser, I wanted to make sure that I included as much detail in the fur as I could. So because of that, this tutorial here, I've uploaded it all in real time, there is no bits sped up, there are no bits cut out, there are no secrets in my tutorials, I make sure that I include everything. That includes any mistakes that I make, because they happen to everybody, but what it means is then that if that mistake happens to you, you know then how to fix it. So I really do not cut anything out. So the 12 hours of footage you get with this tutorial are very step by step. It's a perfect one to draw along to and it's really fun. Having this two effects here with the grayscale and the colour, this has turned out to be one of my favourite portraits. What I also like about this is Patreon members could decide if they wanted to, to draw the whole thing in grayscale and try to work more a little bit on their own on the colour side, or if they were confident with the colour, they could then try to do the other side of the face in colour on their own. That is a massive confidence boost. Given those steps, that little bit of reassurance with me guiding you through that tutorial on one half of that means then that you feel a little bit more comfortable with approaching and tackling the other side without my help. Because all of the tips and techniques that I share on the one side of the face would be exactly the same as the other side. So in terms of how we can use the things that we've learnt with building up the contrast and our depth and then pairing that with colour that we should be using, you can see that I'm now starting to create this curved over edge of the top lip. This isn't because I'm using a particular brown pencil, it's because I've selected a darker brown. Again, that's taking me back to the contrast, it's just because it's a darker colour. 
And if you look at all of the darker values on the grayscale side, it still looks like that face has shape. It looks like it curves over at the top of the eye where that eye socket would be. That's all because I've made sure that I've got my soft edges and that those softer edges are the right contrast. I don't have a very harsh start and stop point between my lights and my darks. Now again, this is all about how we build up those layers to achieve that look. You can see here that I do about two or three layers of a base foundation before I start working on my details. For me, this is really important and this is the case when I'm working with my pan pastels as well. I don't recommend putting a pan pastel base layer in or a soft pastel stick base layer in and then jumping straight into your fine details because the further you're missing out on so many layers that build up the depth. I do think it's far more beneficial to get a nice foundation in place that's a bit more softer, a bit more blended, take those extra couple of minutes to get that right and accurate to the photo and then you can start building up the fur that's closer to the skin and working up from there. The best way to think of it is the hair that's the brightest that's sat on the very top that needs to be left until your last layers because those are the details where if you were to stroke that animal you would touch those first therefore leave those till your last layers. Now something that I talk about on all of my tutorials because it's something that um, I used to do that mistake where I wanted to draw the whiskers in because I personally love how much extra depth and feel they give to any portrait. I would draw those in early on. When I then came to work on the neck area, like what I am here, I would have to draw around those whiskers. Now that adds far more time to the drawing process and it makes things very difficult and awkward. So I would always recommend, just as I'm doing now, is leave those whiskers till that last layer. So I really do hope the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video have been useful. If they were, I would really appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. I also upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. So if you would like to get notified of the content, then hit that subscribe and the bell button. Now, as I've said, this is available on Patreon and I get a couple of questions about Patreon. It's a wonderful platform. I do have a Patreon library on my website where you can see all of the tutorials that are immediately available. There's hundreds of hours of tutorials there. You can have access to all of those as soon as you sign up. And the wonderful thing with Patreon is you can stay for as long as you want or you can cancel at any time. It's really, really flexible. But if you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help if I can. And I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube next week. As always, thank you so much for watching.